Yo, what up? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do the stanky leg. Oh wait, no, I'm saving that home run for when my channel tanks. Actually, now might be a good time. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, I was recently sitting in a movie theater taking in the best picture contender of the year, Minions The Rise of Gru, when it hit me like a volleyball spike straight into a nutsack, a sudden overwhelming feeling of despair. You see, it soon began weighing on me that I would have to do yet another review of a film stock. I've been growing pretty weary about doing uh, film stock review videos lately because I kind of just feel like there isn't a lot to say about them. Portra's got pastel tones, gold has warmth, and Lomo Purple is a bag of ass. But when a new film stock gets dropped, I realize that I suddenly need something to cling on to. The hope that film is still truly alive, because it's all I got at this point. Against all odds, 2022 has actually been a hit year for new film stocks, with the latest announcement coming from our colleagues overseas in Sweden. It seems like the team over there found a fresh line of material and they want to get it produced for the world to shoot with. However, there are some caveats to all this because Nothing in life is easy. If it were, I probably wouldn't have an 82 minute mile time in high school because I ran the wrong way for 30 minutes. So that's all very exciting, but what is this film all about? Is it bussin' or not bussin' on God for real? I was lucky enough to receive two rolls of what they're calling Santa Color, which is a 100 ISO film stock that can be developed in C41. This isn't their first film stock to be called Santa as they originally did a black and white film called Santa Ray 1000. I don't really know what their obsession with Santa Claus is all about, but it is what it is. I for one am all for more color negative film options, but what does the stock actually look like? On the campaign website it says that Santa Color 100 is actually an aerial surveillance film, which uh, sounds kind of creepy. Anyway, the team overseas reached out and asked if I'd be interested in test driving it. At the time they gave me a little bit of information about it, but I really had no idea what it looked like. So I grabbed my Leica M6 and my Forbidden Fruit Caleb to find out what this film stock's got to offer us once and for all. Yo, what up? It's your boy Jason coming to you from, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> the back of an abandoned bar. <sighs> so first impressions of this film stock. It seems to lean pretty heavily into the orange, yellow, red, purple, and brown part of the spectrum, which I totally dig. Though admittedly, it doesn't necessarily translate for every shot. Nice. If you know anything about me, you know that I always try to exaggerate the color brown in all of my work. And this film stock seems to not only slap you in the ass with it, but then make intense eye contact afterwards. I mean, the building itself was brown, so maybe I'm reading too much into it like usual, but regardless, here's a comparison of the same location, but on Kodak Gold 200. Overall, I think that the Santa color has more of a sharp red cast, like my eyes when I'm really hungover, or I've been crying a lot, which usually go hand in hand. 14 shots. Wow, quit bragging. Down the road was a ski lift that was precariously placed on a small cliff right next to the highway, as if the builders wanted to watch out of control skiers fly off into traffic and violently die. Like, there's no way someone could have skied down that. At some point I switched out the Summicron to the Voigtlander 12mm because I love super wide lenses as well as the number 12, 12 hours, 12 angry men, 12 inches long, etc.
Oh, shit. that was at 138. So where did Santa color come from? Sadly, not the North Pole because Santa isn't even real as I learned when I was like 17. It's fun to have new film stocks pop up to play around with, but when they do, their origins quickly become one of life's greatest mysteries. Like how the hell does one milk a walnut? On their Indiegogo campaign, they actually mention it's from a major manufacturer in the United States. Could it possibly be Kodak? Perhaps in disguise wearing a false mustache? I mean, I guess it could be. We already know that Kodak will put out for Cinestill and possibly Lamography, so I guess it isn't totally out of the question, just unlikely. But hey, people grow and change. I thought it was unlikely that I'd ever be able to take a dump at a girl's house, but look at me now, still can't do it. But is this film stock actually new? Interestingly enough, on their campaign website, they do say that this film stock has been available in the past in limited quantities under the name Aerocolor 125. Oh yeah, it definitely has that like abandoned building smell. Aerocolor, not to be confused with Aerochrome, is a T-grain emulsion with a slightly extended sensitivity in the red end of the spectrum. This extended sensitivity actually seems to make foliage pop a bit more due to the reflected infrared light that the emulsion is picking up. So mystery solved, right? It's Aerocolor 125. Yeah, I mean, seems like maybe it is. There's no actual key code information on the film strip, so I guess anything's possible. I gotta say, I do really appreciate how transparent the team has been on their Indiegogo campaign. It makes me have a lot more trust in them, and trust is something that I lost a long time ago when my dog Baxter betrayed me in public and tried to kick his poo in my general direction. Here's a shot of Caleb hitting us with the smolder, or at least holding back really hard trying not to shit himself on camera. You make a face every time it goes off. <laughs> what are you impressed or something? There's an issue. Do you like my ringtone? Yeah, it's cool. It's you on the toilet, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a particularly uh, destructive day. <laughs> So as I was reloading the titanium leather daddy Leica M6, I put the spent roll next to me on the barrier and like a total jackass with no object permanence, I got up and went to shoot and then hopped in the car and drove off, unaware of the dumbassery of my ways. It wasn't until later when I nearly shit my Daisy Duke cutoff shorts that I realized that I had left a comrade behind. So Monica Baxter and I hopped in the car and headed up to the spot where I'd left it. Four hours later and dark with no one on the road, we eventually pulled up and old girl was right where I left her. You bastard. <laughs> yeah. So the film base on this stock is actually kind of interesting. It's not spray tan orange like on a lot of C41 films. It's actually kind of brownish, like poo. Because of this, apparently, the base color can actually throw off the color models on some scanners, or so I've been told. So much so that you might not get those sweet Noritsu tones that you probably dream about every night at this point. I scanned all these shots with a Sony a7R2 DSLR scanning setup and converted with Negative Lab Pro using the default Noritsu profile and number three default saturation model. No other edits were made except maybe a quick white balance adjustment here or there. Anyway, as E40 once said, we're out here trying to function as the sun was piecing out for the day. I decided to take a few blue hour shots and 
This one is by far the best. But something I wanted to touch on real quick is halations. This stock has them. They aren't as Taco Bell bathroom blown out as Cinestills, but they're definitely there. Should probably get out of here before the mountain lions show up, you know what I mean? <laughs> Additionally, skin tones are kind of ass on this stock. It's kind of like Ektar. Your subject's skin tones will look like they have a bad full body rash. But if you don't want your skin tones to look like your subject is sunburnt to hell and back, perhaps you can bask in the knowledge that this film stock's calling card is definitely landscapes. I mean, look at this shot. Warm, majestic, and the colors outright slap you harder than Will Smith. So what if it's an old formula made new again? So what if it's only 100 ISO? So what if I wear women's deodorant? The point is, it's cool to see a newish film stock made available to us, especially if it's a high-end film stock that feels like it's doing something different than other stocks. But anyway, before I wrap up this video, I'd like to quickly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Let's face it, it's 2022. If you don't already have a website for yourself or your business, you're losing out on a major opportunity to display your personal work to the world. As a photographer, I've been using Squarespace for several years now, and I've found it to simply be the easiest solution for building a website because of its intuitive user interface that allows me to customize my site to the fullest extent of my creativity. I even recently revamped my entire website from the ground up, and it was incredibly straightforward. But if you're like me and don't know the first thing about building a website, then worry not. Squarespace has you covered with 24-7 award-winning customer support and an online forum for questions or feedback. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So how do you get your hands on this film stock? You may be wondering as you're stroking your chin and possibly something else with your other hand. Well, the campaign needs to be fully funded first. According to the team behind the campaign, they need a minimum of about 15,000 orders of 35 millimeter to produce a batch. As of recording this video, the campaign is about 47% funded and has about 19 days left on it. I for one hope that it reaches its goal and we see Santa color brought to market. The brown tones in this stock just really call to me like painkillers after jogging. But in all seriousness, wouldn't it be nice to introduce a competitor to other 100 speed film stocks? I think so. So if you're watching this video and going absolute plum wild over these shots like I did, I highly recommend that you head over to their Indiegogo campaign and throw down some gold doubloons. Because if you don't, then you forever lose the right to complain about how sh**ty Ektar is.